In this series I have a fresh RuneScape account and what I'm going to be doing is escaping free to play. Free to play RuneScape is limited in content, account progression is pretty darn slow and it's filled with bots. Being free to play while playing RuneScape isn't ideal, it's not the greatest experience and so what this three part series will show is just how to progress your account while also making money. So as you level your stats on free to play you will also be making money and eventually you can get a bond and become a member. So let's get started. I've got this fresh new free to play account and um, a guy looks hot. He looks slick. I, I like I like what I've done with him with the mohawk, the red mohawk, the pink shirt. He looks cool as hell. Let's just blast through this tutorial island quickly. I'm not going to show that on video. Let's just cut to me getting on the mainland. Do you want to go to the mainland? Yes. Boom. We're in Lumbridge. <laughs> I love the feeling of making a new account, you just end up in Lumbridge. You've got the whole game to play, you know? It's just, it feels pretty cool, I like making new accounts. So the first thing we're going to do is head to the bank at the top of the castle and deposit everything we have except the pickaxe. We're going to use that pickaxe to do some mining, it's how I usually get starter cash on new accounts and free to play. Mining's a good money maker. Sadly that means it's filled with a lot of bots, so you have to navigate that. It makes it a little bit more difficult, a little bit more slower, but Hopefully it isn't too bad. We're going to go mine some copper and tin ore to the south of Lumbridge in the swamp. There's a little mining area for newer players. We're going to mine some copper and tin, turn it into bronze bars and then sell those bars for cash. If you're a newer player and you don't know where things are, there is a world map. On the mini map there's a little globe button. You click on that, it loads a world map. So bronze bars are worth around 200 GP and the copper and tin ore made to make the bronze bars are only 50 GP each. So instead of just mining one type of ore and then selling it, it's actually worth our time mining the two of them and then turning them into the bronze bars worth 200 GP each. I mined three full inventories of copper ore, now it's time to mine three full inventories of tin ore and I just got done smelting those ores into bronze bars. I think I've got over 80 bronze bars now. In free to play, the closest furnace to a bank is an Alcarid. Costs 10 GP to get through the gate but it's worth it because it uh, makes the process of smelting ores way faster. Now we're going to head to the Grand Exchange to sell some bronze bars. Selling them for 192 coins each, which has made us over 16k GP. We're still combat level 3, we've only got a few mining and smithing levels. That's not too bad. Brand new account, 16k. With that money, let's buy an iron armor set, an iron scimitar, turn the set into items, buy a strength amulet, and a red cape to look cool. Now we're all geared up. Teleporting back to Lumbridge to do the classic low level money making slash combat training method, slaying cows. Slaying cows in Lumbridge has always been a very popular money making and low level training method. It brings back a lot of memories killing these things. And there's a pen directly to the north of Lumbridge, not northeast, which is the usual pen. The one to the north is a little bit less busy because, like mining, cows are a decent money maker, so it's heavily bodied. I've found that this pen that I'm in on the video is way less bodied and way less popular than the one to the east of it, across the water. I don't have any food, so I need to pick up some raw beef and cook them in Draenor. I found this tiny little, like, fireplace thing. <laughs> I couldn't find a range. I haven't done Cook's Assistant, so I couldn't do it in Lumbridge. I'm going to get 20 attack, 20 strength, 20 defense here at cows, picking up all the cow hides, then tan them afterwards. For the newer players that don't know, you can tan your cow hides, turn them into leather by speaking to the NPC in the building right next to the furnace in Alcarid. Here it is on the map, right by the Alcarid bank is the closest range to a bank so you can train cooking, closest furnace to a bank so you can train smithing and the closest tanner, I guess is what you would call it, to a bank so you can tan hides easily. It's a very convenient place here in Alcarid. I have 565 leather now, it costs 1 GP per hide but it's worth it because leather is like 40 coins I think more than cow hides when you sell it so it's definitely worth it. I'm going to head to the Grand Exchange and sell this leather. Selling the leather I have 13k GP or just under it in my inventory. Clicking collect I now have 133k. My stats so far aren't impressive, 21 hit points, 20 attack, strength, defense, 122 total level, 16 mining. 6 smithing and 3 cooking because of that, that raw beef I was cooking earlier in that crappy fireplace. But I've got such newbie stats but I've got a decent amount of GP for a low level free to player. There is 21 mining, I can now drop this crappy bronze pickaxe and use the mithril pickaxe that I have equipped. Which is going to make the process of getting level 41 mining from mining copper and tin ore 
way faster. I'm going to do what I'd done at the start of the video, I'm mining an equal amount of copper and tin to turn into bronze bars to sell for more money. When I get 41 mining doing this, I can use a ruined pickaxe which will make mining way faster and with that ruined pickaxe I want to mine iron ore because it's actually pretty valuable at the moment. I think it's like 180 GP each and it's very quick to mine. So I want to get 41 ruined pickaxe with iron ore. If I try to mine iron ore without the ruined pickaxe and just starting now with the mithril pickaxe, there's so many other people and bots trying to mine iron ore because it's a good money maker and free to play that it's, uh, it's impossible to actually get a rock to get any ore because of the amount of characters doing it at the same time. But if you've got a ruined pickaxe and a high mining level that you got from mining copper and tin, then you should get a majority of the ores and make some money. Old school mobile releases in about 30 days time is going to bring in a lot of new players, at least people think it's going to bring in a lot of new players, a lot of new free players. Imagine coming to this very popular mining spot as a new mobile player and you're, and you're met with all these bots. About three people here are real. I'm one of them. The rest are all robots mining ore to make gold. It's really upsetting to see this, honestly. As you can see in the chat box, I just got 41 mining. I'm going to finish off this inventory and go turn all the ores I've mined into bars. That is a lot of ore. 1083 copper, 1083 tin. All mined in free to play with my mithril pickaxe. I'm back at the Alcarid furnace and this may take a while. I've got a lot of ore to smelt. And here we have it, over 1,000 bronze bars. These should sell for a pretty penny and give us a good chunk of cash towards our bond. That's the thing we're working towards. Here's a quick tip for newer players. There's an item called the Chronicle that you can buy from Diango and Draenor. Uh, you buy pages with it, you use the pages on the book, and now you have a bunch of teleports to Varok. Hitting Collect gives us 225 kgp from selling 1000 bronze bars and a bunch of gems and because smelting bronze bars is pretty profitable it's actually a decent money maker right now at this point in time i'm just gonna buy 3000 copper ore 3000 tin ore with the money that i just made turn them into bars and sell them the cost of tin and copper ore add up to about 100 gp and you sell the bronze bars for 200 gp or around that so it's basically doubling money except it's actually real and you won't get scammed it's always worth keeping an eye out on prices. If you can turn one resource into like a product or into another resource, check the prices of it. It might actually be worth doing as a money maker. I didn't start this account thinking I'm going to make bronze bars for money. I just saw in the moment that it would be worth it and so I started doing it. So if you're watching this and you're going to follow it to get a bond, check the price of bronze bars, check the price of the ores first before you go ahead and do it because prices change all the time and it might not actually be profitable. This is the last inventory out of the 3000 bronze bars I have to make. There we go. Look at that 3k right there. That looks real good. Let's go sell it. They sold for 150 GP each, sadly not 200 each, but it's still a nice chunk of change. Look at that cash stack and I will have over 500k and my bank is worth over 500k. We're halfway to a mill. Let's get that milly before we end the video. Smelting the 3000 bars has gotten me 36 smithing. That's not a bad level. I want to do more combat, I want to train my magic and range, and I'm going to do that at the Hill Giants. Hill Giants are actually a fairly decent, low level, combat money making method and free to play. Hill Giants are always busy. They're very popular because they're low level, they have a lot of hit points and they have low defense, so they're very good to train against and they drop big bones, limpwort roots, law ruins and those types of things which are decent things to sell on the grand exchange for GP. So it's like the best of both worlds, makes them very popular. The trick to actually getting yourself a hill giant to fight over and over again is to just find where one spawns, memorize its spawn point and get ready to click. Try and memorize how long it takes for the hill giant to respawn, count it up in your head and then click as soon as it spawns, get the first hit on it so no one else can attack it so you can secure your spot at the hill giants. If you're ranging or maging there's plenty of safe spots you can hide, there's like stalagmites or stalactites, I forgot which one sticks out of the ground but there's lots of them lying around you can safe spot like I'm doing here in this clip. I started off training magic at the hill giants from level 1 magic because you get XP when training magic even if you don't do any damage. So I'm going to train magic here until level 33 magic where I can use telenetic grab which is used to telegrab Zanny Wines which is the best money maker in free to play. When my inventory gets filled up with big bones and roots and stuff it's time to head to the grand exchange and sell it. You get a couple of K per inventory. It's not the fastest money making method but it's just a good way to make some GP while training combat. There we go, I'm level 33 magic, as you can see in the chat box, I can now use telekinetic, telekinetic grab. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to go telegrab Zami Wines right now. I'm now going to train some range. Buy a bunch of bows, buy some arrows. 
I got 20 range slaying cows, I just picked up the cow hide, turned it into leather, banked them. If I went to the hill giants with one range, I would never hit anything and it would take ages to level up, so went to cows instead. The chances of this happening to you is pretty slim, but every now and then some rich guy who's a member decides to come to free to play and give low level noobs like myself in this clip some free stuff, some free GP. This random dude walked up to me and said, hey, pick a number between 1 and 25 or something. I just picked a random number. He gave me an item that corresponds to the inventory slot, which was a ruined skirt. Okay, it's worth like 40k. I can't complain. Don't expect this to happen, but it's pretty cool when it does. So I just got 30 range here at the Hill Giants, and the reason for training range is, well, there's not much reason for it. I just wanted to train range, I want to level up my stats on this account, and so I'm just doing it in a way that makes me money by fighting Hill Giants. There is level 40 range, a good level in free-to-play, because I can equip the best range armor possible in free-to-play green dragon hide armor. Now it's time to move on, I'm a little bit bored of training range, I want to go back to making some more GP. Fighting hill giants, it's a good way to train combat, the money's okay but it's not the best, I want to go for something that's just purely GP, I want to start making more progress towards that bond. And we're going to be doing that by mining iron ore. As I mentioned earlier in the video, mining iron only requires the level of 15 mining, it's not a high requirement, and it's one of the best money making methods. If you start mining iron ore at level 15, or even before level 41 where you can wear a ruined pickaxe, it's not the best money maker, and the chances of bots or other players getting the ore before you can is pretty high. But I have 41 mining, I have a Ruined pickaxe, and I'm in the dwarven mine by Falador, which is a little bit quieter. So, mining iron ore here is actually one of the best money makers in free to play. The iron ore spots here are surrounded by scorpions, however, because I've been training my combat stats, I'm around level 30 combat. The scorpions are level 14, and in old school RuneScape, in most cases, if you are over double the level of an enemy, they won't attack you automatically. So I'm fairly safe here. However, there are two king scorpions, which are around level 28, which do attack me automatically. So I have a couple of pieces of food in my inventory, as you can see. Just in case they attack me, I can heal myself and run to the other side of the rocks or something to continue mining. When my inventory is full, I run to the east and climb the staircase. And from here, just follow the buildings to the southwest until you come across a bank to deposit the iron, getting around 4.6k GP, at least at the time of this recording. The price of iron ore bounces between 150 and 200 GP each, making it between 4 or 5k GP per inventory. And if you've done what i done, which is mine copper and tin until 41 mining, then get the best pickaxe possible and free to play the ruined pickaxe and do this, you're making 4.5k. KGP every couple of minutes and it's actually a pretty banging money making method for free players. If you're a newer player and you don't know where this iron mining spot is exactly, let's just zoom into Falador, the city it's in, and you can see the little bank icon, that's the bank we use, and up to the northeast is a dungeon entrance that takes you down into the mine, and then to the west of the staircase is the iron rocks. I have just got done mining over 1,500 iron ore and damn is that boring. I do not recommend any new player to do that in a single sitting like I just done now. But depositing the ore and putting my pickaxe back in the bank takes my bank value to exactly 1 million GP. 1 million GP is more than enough money for any free to play account because you can buy the best armor and stuff but it's only about one quarter of the way towards a old school bond, a membership bond. They usually bounce between like 3.5 to 4 million GP. Before we end this first episode of Escape from Free to Play, let's do a quick recap of how we got 1 million GP. Mining tin and copper ore, smelting them into bronze bars, slaying hill giants and selling the big bones and ruins and roots that they drop, and mining iron ore. If you wanted to level other resource gathering skills like woodcutting and fishing, you can still do that while making money. You can sell logs for GP, you can sell fish for GP, all on the grand exchange. Any resource gathering skill is probably going to make you money. I believe mining to be the best one for free to play. I made this account and played through it to show newer players how they can play the game as a free player, train whatever they want to train while also making money so they can eventually escape free to play. Or you can pay $11 for membership. <laughs> Either way, you can escape free to play. 
I am currently working on the second installment of this short series, only a three part series, where we cover even more money making methods in free to play, so stay tuned if you're a newer player and you want to find out how to make money. Goodbye. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching that video. I really appreciate it. If you want to subscribe, you can hit this profile picture icon or just below the video there's a subscription button. Make sure you hit the bell too so you know when I upload new videos. And if you want to watch my most recent video, make sure you click on the top right there. It takes you to my most recent video created and uploaded to the YouTube channel. And if you're in the mood to binge watch a bunch of RuneScape videos, that playlist in the bottom right has over 200 of them.